Welcome to the next episode of Cruise Talks. I'm your host, Just Cruise. This episode we're going to be going into, and it's going to be part of my K-State graduate uh, MPA final for my society class. Uh, we'll be going into the topic dealing with veteran affairs and the engagement that's needed and that's required within the veteran affairs and also having veterans more enthusiastic or maybe finding different ways of trying to reach out to them so that they're more engaged with the changes and the possible outcomes of future bills that may be passed or just legislation that helps provide more benefits and entitlements for veterans. So this will be the next episode. Let's get into it. So we have to start off by saying that all the opinions and the facts and the stuff that I will be stating today are are my own. They are in no part a K-State opinion. None of this is related to Kansas State University. This is just a final production or basically a way of completing my final for a class which has nothing to do with the opinions or the facts or the thought process of Kansas State University. These are my personal beliefs and my personal thoughts going into the situation on how we can help veterans with the veterans affairs. So one thing that is a big issue is dealing with veterans. Veterans right now are, I wouldn't say limited. There's about 19 million of us in the States or across the world spread around on record. From that, there's only about like 5 million that have actually used their benefits or signed up for entitlements or even made a disability claim. Now, that doesn't take into account the many veterans that have been denied veteran uh, benefits or their entitlements. So we cannot get an accurate number as to how many people have actually participated in filing for disability or using their benefits. But of the fact that on record, there's only 5 million out of a possible 19 million shows that there's more that needs to be done in order to get more veterans, their entitlements and their benefits. So one thing with the veteran community is the VA veteran affairs. So the veteran affairs is basically a system to help veterans, which provides health care, provides uh, home loan assist assistance, it, it provides uh, mental health assistance. There's different departments and different avenues that can be used within the VA that helps veterans. But a lot of the times the information isn't put out to them and the information is not known by the veterans. So a lot of the cases where we have the lack of engagement is if you ask them, they just don't know that those requirements or those eligibilities or any any of the things that can benefit them. Some of them just don't have that information and aren't obtaining it from the military when they're exiting the military or even after the fact when they're already veterans and are back in the civilian workforce or just back to being a civilian and no longer military personnel. So one thing that does assist with the VA is the committees of veterans affairs. You have the house committee, which is with the house of representatives and you have the U S Senate U S Senate committee of veteran affairs. Now with these, there are two entities within Congress, basically both trying to provide and assist veterans with benefits, with laws, passing bills in order to protect veterans or assist veterans. Um, there's there's different things that they do. They hold different hearings. They hold try to help hold the VA accountable at times for issues that they're lacking in or issues that they need fixing. Or even when it comes to providing more funding or obtaining more funding from the government in order to help these situations and these veterans out. So the House Committee of Veteran Affairs holds 25 personnel of those. There are 14 Republicans and 11 and 11 Democrats, so 25 in total. And the chairman is Mike Boast, which is from the state of Illinois. Then you also have the Senate Veteran Affairs Committee, which is a total of 19 members, and there are 10 Democrats and nine Republicans. And the chairman is John Tester from the state of Montana. 
Now, keep in mind, all of these representatives and senators are for their state also. So they do have priority in taking care of their state. Some of these senators and representatives are also fellow veterans that have served in the United States military. So they know and understand what it is to be a veteran, but they have become representatives and senators, which are trying to enhance and make it better quality for people like themselves. Now, there's different laws and different legislations that the committees have worked on. Some of them have been in prior con Congresses, which currently were in the 118th Congress. And some of them have been in previous years in other Congresses that they have passed bills or tried to publish bills or at least put, put them out there so that they can be seen. If you look at the Congress, if you check them out on their websites on the VA uh, Veterans uh, Committee, you have them and they will have a list of all the bills that they are trying to pass, all the legislation that has been signed into law and what hasn't. So with a couple of the examples that I have for some of the stuff that they have passed, uh, mainly the biggest one uh, was last year was the PACT Act, which is for the veterans to obtain medical coverage or health coverage if they were in a toxic um, environment, uh, not leadership wise, I mean, in like actual toxins, uh, like if they were around the burn pits or they were part of the burn pit situation, or if they served in an area where it was a hostile environment for them and their body and their health. Also, it's for radiation. If people served in radiation uh, near uh, like the islands of Atoll when they were doing nuclear testing, those are to provide stuff. There's a long list of now presumptive um, claims that veterans can make. There's a long list of them. Some of them are dealing with certain cancers and certain issues that may develop like, uh, I can never say it right, uh, sinusitis or that basically allergies is, is the basic way of putting it. Um, those are things that before a lot of veterans were dealing with and they couldn't have the ability to claim it. So they were they were claiming it, but there was nothing that was justifying it or saying that, yes, this was caused due to my time in service. So now with the PACT Act, that allowed veterans to claim a lot of these issues and they were tied to service. If you served overseas from a certain time period, there's a certain amount of countries, some being Afghanistan, Iraq, uh, Kuwait, uh, there's, there's a couple, there's a bunch of other countries. I can't off the top of my head. I can't think of them, but if you served in those areas, you possibly were in lesser quality air, which may have caused pulmonary issues or pulmonary cancers, uh, sinusitis or sinitis. I can't, I have to look how <laughs> you say the word, but those are things that were introduced and that was an act that was made to benefit people which had uh, visibility nationwide because it was a push for veterans to get these issues claimed and be able to claim them due to the fact that they weren't able to show that there was a connection between their time in service and getting diagnosed with these issues. The PACT Act removed that boundary or that barrier that they had in order to be able to claim it and show that it was service connected. So that was one of the biggest ones that happened. And that was last year uh, in August of 2022. Now we have other ones like the Wounded Warrior Access Act. So this one is a bill that is being introduced to basically have information or an online tool that would allow veterans to access or representatives because sometimes veterans use the veteran um, service organizations in order to represent them when it comes to disability claims. This is a tool that Congress wants created by the VA in order for the service member or that representative to be able to obtain that documentation and those files for when they file a claim with the VA. 
Now, that is something that is accessible through va.gov, which will show your claims, but it doesn't show the pertinent information as to what was decided and stuff like that. You have to do a lot more digging. So they're trying to establish a different avenue for representatives and for the veterans themselves to access this information. You also have the, the VA Transparency and Trust Act of 2021. Now, this was an act that was pushed and they're trying to get it passed in order for the VA to start reporting where all the billions of dollars went that were received with the emergency relief fund, which was received during the COVID-19 pandemic to see where the funds were distributed, what was done with them. How were they used? What wasn't used? And it was just something in order for the VA to be consistently every year making a notation to Congress like, hey, this is the money we received. This is where we put this money. This is how we used it. This is what we built or this is what we created. So there can be a better transparency as to where these funds are going because some of the issues are lacking within the veteran affairs where funding has been provided, but the end state isn't arriving. Now, there's also a bill that they are trying to get passed, which was to determine uh, basically allowing, uh, let me see, let me just double check. It was for Congress to be able to determine eligibility and or entitlements of veterans in the case of their medical records or uh, military file being lost or damaged while in the possession of the U.S. government. So this was mostly due to the fact that um, there was a fire in 1973, which was of the National Personnel Records, which the building caught on fire and a lot of personnel's files were lost in the fire. So a lot of these personnel are still having issues with trying to claim that they were serving in the military or were part of the military due to the fact that their files were lost in these fires. So there, it's a bill to create, to allow Congress to allow them to see and determine the eligibility for these veterans to receive disabilities or to receive any entitlements. Um, a lot of the fire, it mostly, it took out a lot of records for all the branches, but the biggest parts that were taken out were for the army, which was from 1912 to 1965, that whole section of records was gone. And then also for the Air Force records, it was from 1947 to 1959. Now, basically, if any service members throughout that time period did not receive any eligibility or any compensation or couldn't claim because they didn't have, let's say, the copy of a DD-214 available to show that they served in the military and exited. The so without those, they weren't able to fulfill the requirements of showing that they did have military service, or sometimes it didn't show where they possibly deployed to, where they possibly could have gone, which also ties into the PACT Act, which has to show that, hey, if you were in these areas or deployed or did time in these areas and your records were burned, in the fire, you have no way of actually stating that you were in the military and showing that. So that's something that Congress is also trying to pass. So that leads into, there's, there's a ton of stuff that, like I said, the Congress is, they have tons of bills. If you check on their websites for the house committee and for the Senate committee, they have a list of all the bills trying to be passed, everything that has been brought to Congress, stuff that has been put into into law or made into law and everything is broken down there a lot of it you will see that it was like hey it was read twice and then it was sent to the committee or some it was just like it got read and it just stopped there so there's a lot of stuff that doesn't get put out there but when it comes to the veterans and veterans realizing what's going on the biggest issue is is that a lot of this information isn't being put out a lot of this information isn't what what's publicized a lot of what's publicized is the failures within the va or the issues going on with the va so uh one of the hearings that the committee had was on 
September 26th of 2023, which was basically due to the persistent IT failures of the V8, which is something that I myself dealt with personally due to the fact that I received a letter and I believe it was another 75,000 other veterans basically claiming that they did not receive or there was an error with their submission when they submitted it online for the VA claims, but it all it didn't specify what the issue was. So there was issues with information being omitted, um, information just being lost, some not being sent to the proper channels to be read or looked at in order for claims to be looked at or obtained or approved or denied. So those are things that were not in place and things that had to be looked at due to the fact that, hey, people submitted stuff, but there was no idea what the issue was. So the letter I received just stated, hey, there's nothing going on that you need to do. You don't need to contact the VA, but we're just letting you know that there was an issue, not specifically what the issue was, but that we're looking into it and we're conducting investigation. Uh, it's been a couple of months now, and I still haven't received any information as to what the issue was. And I don't think any other veteran received of those 75,000 has received any information stating what it was that was wrong with the claim and what wasn't properly taken care of. So with that failure to receive information, um, information being omitted, that's something that the committee held that hearing for just to, I guess you could say, grill the VA as to why they were missing such information. Now, things like this is part of the reason why a lot of veterans are hesitant to deal with the VA. But then there's also other hearings that were heard by the committees. And some of them were just like, hey, are veterans receiving quality services? Now, that's difficult to to understand because most people see it as, oh, you're a veteran. You receive health care, you get that. Uh, but the thing is, is it's not always the best health care. And sometimes it's the issues that veterans deal with when going to those appointments or getting those appointments that most people don't understand. So there's a lot of horror stories that come from it. And that also leads, ties into the lack of engagement and motivation for veterans to deal with the VA. So in the case of horror stories for veterans with their appointments, there's appointments that sometimes can be three to four or five months out from the next time they're able to see you. And if it's an issue um, and you can see it, there's tons of videos on, on veterans on YouTube or on Instagram or on TikTok just talking about the issues that they've had within trying to get an appointment. Some one I know was for eye care, just to get eyeglasses. Um, they've been needing them. They always had them. The next available appointment for them, I think was like five months out. There was a way to work around it. But then the thing is, is you also have to ask to try to see if you can get an outside referral for these appointments to try to length, uh, close down that time from when they can provide an appointment. Uh, for me, for dental, Dental for me, an appointment came out to be, I think it was like four months ahead of time. Now, sometimes, you know, people cancel appointments and they try to move you up. But in the case that nobody cancels or that information isn't passed on to you, you may be waiting four to five months to get an appointment. And, and that was just for me, dental. That's also concern, considering and concerning people when it comes to physical therapy, chiropractors, um, just any kind of services of, of that magnitude can cause those issues. Um, so those are some of the horror stories just on obtaining an appointment. Now you have the issues with contracting out services. Now these are services that are not VA. They're not part of the VA, but the VA knows that, Hey, we can't get you an appointment soon enough. So we're going to pay somebody else to hold that appointment for us to conduct that service that you need, whether it's, like I said, a chiropractor, physical therapy, um, any, any kind of issue that you may have, that's what's gonna, that's what's gonna happen. And that's gonna be the time frame that it may be enabled for you to be able to get or receive care. So that's something that takes 
a lot a lot because it's now do you have somebody to have to be contracted in order to get you an appointment or find that veteran that appointment another thing is the issues with the uh, CMP exam, which a CMP exam is the compensation and pension examiners. Those exams are basically what determines and what they do when you file a claim, you file a disability claim and they check on what that claim is that you claim. So whether it's like, Hey, you have a bad shoulder. Okay. That CMP examiner will check on your soul on your shoulder. They're supposed to have certain things there and they're supposed to ask you certain things and you're supposed to respond honestly with what your issue is. Now, some do it correctly, some do not. Some cut corners, some do not. So that also adds to the horror stories that veterans deal with and you hear about due to the fact that the examiners are either not caring or very dismissive or don't don't really care to listen to what you're saying. They just like, oh, okay, you said this, okay, yada, 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 and don't really pay attention or notate the actual issues that it is that you're stating. Now, when it comes to that, those issues can be an underlying factor as to why your claim may be denied. So if your CMP examiner um, doesn't write down the fact that, hey, it's difficult for you to pick up stuff, it's pick, difficult for you to grip stuff, or it's difficult for you to like bend over or like kneel down or you can't lift up a certain amount of weight like if that's not notated in the claim that's something that can affect your claim because it goes off of the code of regulations and it describes exactly what the ailment is and how the how bad the ailment is supposed to be or is in order to receive a certain rating now in those cases where the cmp examiner doesn't do their job correctly that affects veterans in the long run because now you just got denied for that claim, let's say. Now going forward, you have to fight that claim because, hey, you're still in pain, you're still hurt, so you still need to fix that situation. So that goes into dealing with, hey, if I can't trust the people that are supposed to take care of me and see that I'm injured, why am I going to continue to do this? So a lot of veterans, when they get that denial claim, they just give up and stop, which is the wrong answer because if you're still hurt, that means you need to you need that to be reevaluated, which there are methods of getting an appeal or getting a higher level review. But most veterans don't want to deal with the hassle because they feel like, hey, if I already got denied the first time, I doubt I'm going to be admitted for the for the next time. So that's something that that's there. But But that's also going into more of the receiving quality services is that there's gaps that are being viewed by the VA. Congress sees them, the veterans see them, but some of the stuff isn't being changed. Not a lot is moving forward, as in the fact with um, the PACT Act. So when you go into the PACT Act, there was a headline story by a reporter named Melissa Chan, and she went ahead and basically spoke on how veterans were not receiving their care or were being denied PACT Act claims, even though they had the documentation showing that they were in those areas of service or were by toxins or they were working near radiation or whatever the case may be for their claim, they were still being denied even though they had the information. So that's one of those gaps where it's like, hey, I provided you all the information as a veteran that I needed to to meet the requirements to have my claim approved since they're presumptive, meaning that, hey, as long as I show that this happened and I'm diagnosed with it, it should be approved. Veterans are still being denied. So that's a gap that Congress was seeing and that veterans see because that was something, like I said, she reported it. And that's more of the headline grabbing attention that 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 comes from it as compared to, hey, this is the bill we came up with to try to benefit you. The news listens more, pays attention more to the fact that, hey, veterans are being denied, even though the PACT Act is supposed to approve them of these claims. Now, the other issue when it comes to the VA was a lot of VA uh, personnel leaving or resigning or quitting due to the fact of the PACT Act and so many submissions that were being submitted. Now, as a VA raider, you're looking at that information and you're looking at it and 
you have to find information, you have to find documentation of medical within medical records or any issues showing like, hey, this happened with this, they got injured at said time, they did physical therapy or they've had injuries since this time, whatever the case, or they've been taking medication for that. That's all that stuff that has to be there. But a lot of that was being overlooked due to the fact that these workers were being overwhelmed with all the stuff that was there. Now, the VA has done better. And in this past year, they said they have reported, um, they have employed a lot more uh, people, even though they lost a good amount. They have employed more people and they're continuing to push to employ to help facilitate with these claims because they know a lot of the veterans right now are from the Vietnam era. Now, what people fail to realize when it comes to that is that a lot of the Vietnam era veterans are now getting close to passing away age is the best way of putting it lightly. So a lot of these PACT Act claims and a lot of these PACT Act, that bill was mostly for those veterans due to the fact that a lot of them were not receiving care or have cancers or have ailments that they got due to the military but they weren't able to do anything with them due to the fact that there was nothing there for them. Now, with that being there, they're still being denied the issue. So that's something that they have to deal with and they're hesitant to do it. But now you have all these veterans coming up where the VA says and the National Survey of Veteran Analytics is saying that the number of veterans is going to decrease. Now, I understand them saying that, but at the same time, the way I see it is a lot of these veterans that they have now, the numbers will decrease because a lot of the veterans are from the Vietnam area. And now if those Vietnam veterans are starting to pass away, yes, those numbers will eventually start dropping. But what they fail to consider is, is that you have a lot of veterans now that are reaching their retirement age after joining after joining after 9-11. So a lot of that stuff, a lot of those veterans, a lot of those numbers are not being paid attention to because me, myself, I was supposed to serve at least another 10 years in order to retire. I got out at 10 years, so I wouldn't count towards the veteran numbers till 2033 if that was the case. But you have a lot of these veterans that served in Afghanistan, that served in Iraq, that are reaching their 20, 21 years, 22 years, 23 years. And now all of those veterans are going to be retiring within the next three to four years. So basically those numbers of veterans from Vietnam may be decreasing, but the numbers from these generations and these new wars are going to be increasing because they're going to be exiting. You have a ton of people that are leaving the military now and they don't have those 20 years. They're not retiring. They're just leaving the military after like one contract, two contracts. I did three contracts and I was out. So that adds to the veteran numbers. So the veteran numbers is always going to be there because there's always going to be the military. So you will always continue to have veterans throughout all the branches. And you even added an extra branch now with the Space Force. So that's something that is not viewed. But the thing is, is a lot of these veterans now are going into the same problems and issues that these Vietnam era veterans are dealing with, where there wasn't adequate services. There's not enough contracted personnel to assist. There's not enough health care to go around. There's enough health care now to get it to the veteran. Different story. Now, if the veteran isn't asking for the health care, can't get them health care. So that's why it's important to get the veteran engagement in in order to do that due to the fact that so many veterans they they just don't know what's going on so a lot of these veterans now are going to be retiring and exiting and have no idea how to file a, a disability claim uh yes congress mandated it when they get out of the military with the uh, soldier for life or transition assistance program that they be taught this information but those classes don't go in depth. Those classes just tell you how to, hey, go onto the website. You'll bring your documentation and stuff like that, and you'll file. They don't break down the information as to what it is you need to file, what you should file, what 
actual ailments are there, how to read the Code of Federal uh, Federal Regulations, Chapter 38. Um, none of that is broken down to the veterans so they don't understand and they don't see it. So that leads into more of the engagement from veterans because a lot of them don't know. A lot of them think, hey, I did my time in the military and I'm done. And they don't understand the the eligibility for entitlements or just entitlements that they do receive or eligibility for other items that as a veteran you can receive. There's health care, there's mental health care, there's uh, VA loans, there's uh, technical skills, there's the GI Bill. There's so many different benefits that are available to veterans, but Congress, I don't think, is doing a good enough job in order to make sure that everybody is seeing that. What they do publicize is, yes, the PACT Act. This was for veterans that were needing this for years. Vietnam was decades ago. Those veterans have been out of war and in the civilian workforce for decades now. And now is when legislation is being passed. The other issue coming into it now is, like I said, you have the veterans coming from Afghanistan and Iraq. There's a lot of PTSD in those veterans. There's a lot of mental health issues in those veterans. There's a lot of injuries that happened within those veterans from being in those combat zones and those combat deployments. And it's it's those issues there that are not being valued. I, well, I can't say valued because of the fact that Congress sees it. But it's that they can't really do much about it because they're trying to say the VA is where you need to go. But then the more publicized thing is that, hey, the VA is failing you. The VA isn't providing you adequate services. The VA is taking too long to to go through your claims. The VA is losing your claims. Or the VA misprocessed this claim that you did, which was denied even though you had the correct information. So. It's something that Congress needs to work on. And like the issue of the um, the Transparency Act, just, hey, where's this money going to? Where are we doing with it? What's going on? So like if you have those issues and those acts to basically try to create something to help assist veterans, but it's not being done and nobody's being held accountable for it not being completed, that's where we continue to run into the issue. And I think a lot of veterans see that when it comes to accountability issues. There's a lot of them going on right now in the military that continue to happen and still nobody gets held accountable or held to the fire for an issue that happened. There's a lot of issues within the military that need to be taken care of and they're not being taken care of. So it kind of starts at that level where veterans see like, hey, if I had medical issues or I had this issue and I tried to get something done within the military and they weren't helping, chances are the VA is going to probably be the same way, which is the wrong mentality to have. But it's the mentality that gets, you can say, institutionalized to many veterans that they see like, hey, I'm tough. I don't need this. And the problem is a lot of them do need it. Mental health wise, especially a lot of veterans need mental health assistance they need to go talk to somebody they need counseling but that isn't something that gets pushed to that point um just like with the committee that they have they do other things another one i forgot to mention was the um uh veteran economic recovery act now this one got passed a couple years ago but it was due to covid19 so any veterans that had lost their job during the pandemic it was a bill to basically allow veterans to get retrained faster or get training in high demand jobs or in demand jobs if they were one of those veterans that lost their job because of the pandemic so that's something to assist but that's something that wasn't publicized because that's something that most veterans don't hear about unless they dig deep into the legislation that the committees passed and you go through 
Because right now, if you go on the website, the House Committee of Veteran Affairs, it goes from the 111th Congress to the 118th Congress. Uh, and then if you try to access the 118th Congress, sometimes it doesn't even want to populate for you. So there's an issue within that also. But that's also that it ties into like, hey, where's this information and why isn't this information more readily available for veterans to see, for them to be able to acknowledge and decipher for themselves? The information that gets pushed out the most is, hey, this is the negative stuff that's going on with the VA. So that's a bad stigma that the VA continues to receive because all the negative news you hear is of claims not being correctly filed, not being taken care of. So veterans feel like they are not being taken care of and they're not being heard. And the thing is, is we need more veterans to be heard and we need more veterans to be vocal about the issues that they're having so that Congress can hear them better. A lot of the times it falls on deaf ears, which I think is another reason why military veterans don't want to file. They don't want to deal with the situation as they feel it's like a, a bigger burden to them. And some even feel that, hey, if I'm using some of these benefits, I'm going to be taken away from somebody else's benefits, which is the wrong thought process and is the most incorrect thing possible. Everybody has the ability to receive care if they're a veteran. Every veteran is able to get to 100% uh, permanent and total disability compensation. Now, do they all get there? No, but the military understands, Congress understands, the VA understands. Everybody that served in the military is eligible to get to that 100%. Now, everybody doesn't get there. Some try as hard as they can to. There's issues with veterans lying about their situations which that was in a separate uh report that came out of veterans lying about their ailments and stuff like that being caught on camera uh even though they said they had bad backs and whatever they were caught in a gym on camera lifting ridiculous amount of weights with no issues doing it consistently and that's stuff that like i said it's it's stuff that 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 hinders veterans but at the same time that's the stuff that gets publicized and the public the publicized stuff is what gets seen and that's what needs to be changed and what needs to be viewed by veterans to see that yes the va is trying to help you the va is trying to assist you congress even though a lot of these bills are just name changes or don't get pushed to become law they are trying to make a change but it's not enough. So that's something that needs to be taken care of. And that's something that needs to be viewed in order for veterans to see that the information they're trying to gain and the information that they need is out there. And that will increase engagement with veterans. Now, if veterans don't continue with the participation, then the VA is going to be losing budget or not going to be requiring as much due to the fact that, hey, you don't have people requesting it, so why are we funding so much? So that goes into the situation where, hey, if we're not using the budget, we don't need the budget, then that means we need to cut that budget and put it elsewhere. So that's something that veterans need to keep in mind, and that's something that we need to work on to get better transparency across the military veterans community in order to allow them to see the changes and the things that need to be done in order to benefit them and those veterans in the future. Now, this concludes this episode of Cruise Talks. We will be continuing on a later date with other episodes. We will be diving into the VA situation and different aspects and certain reports that have come out from Veterans Affairs in order to more facilitate the viewing and the understanding and the transparency that the VA can provide these veterans. So this is information that we will continue to try to push and we will continue to expand on in further podcast episodes and just on YouTube videos in general, just to showcase the information that we have benefits, we have entitlements, we just need to be more accountable on ourselves and those on our peers to be able to take advantage of them. This is Cruise Talks. I'm just Cruise. Catch you on the next episode. Thanks for tuning in.